Right, hi there. So today I got this in the post. Uh, this is an inverter welder from banggood.com. So yeah, just take a look at it. Um, links will be in the description to it if you're interested. It's uh, pretty much the cheapest one you can get on the internet. Okay, so this TIG machine is available direct from China for $124 dollars and 99 cents uh, obviously price is subject to change i've got nothing to do with that and then also uh there's another model which is uh, almost exactly the same um, it's got the same model number and everything just a different color case on it and in the usa you can get it for 109 dollars 99 cents so yep if you're interested go and take a look at those links they'll be in the description below thanks so yeah let's take a look at it so the box has been pretty beat up. Um, it took approximately two weeks to be delivered to me, uh, direct from China. So bits that are in the box, this is a bare, bare unit, so it doesn't come with any leads or TIG torch or anything. So it's just got the user manual, quality control slip and uh, DINs connectors and a uh, connector to connect the torch to so yeah you can see it's been through the walls a bit it's a bit broken up uh, it looks to be intact all looks okay nothing rattling so I do have a TIG torch but not one that actually fits directly to this machine I uh, haven't really done much TIG welding, probably about, I don't know, 20 minutes worth. So let's set it up and test it. And then we've got the mains cable, which is probably about 1.2 meters, I'd say. Uh, one thing, it's only got a live and neutral on here, so we're going to have to connect a earth up to it, uh, because obviously if the case something goes wrong inside the machine case goes live and you go and touch it uh, it's not going to be very pleasant all right so i've got the plug on it and for the earth cable just for the minute what i've done is was i've just used one of these uh, crimp connectors with a ring on it and i've earthed it down here to the earthing point and then in the plug it just goes into the earth pin on the plug so my TIG torch, what I've got, uh, is for um, scratch start or lift, lift um, start um, TIG. So it hasn't got a switch on it. So I've basically just got one of these little micro switches and fitted on there. This has also got the gas valve on it. And also the connection on the end of the TIG torch uh, is not the right connection for this. I think this is a 3 8 BSP on here. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can get an adapter. My one just goes directly to the um, tank gas, but it won't fit onto this connector here. And I'll plug the TIG torch in. And the ground or return lead. Right, so let's turn the machine on. Right, so the controls, you've got your um, post flow, TIG, MMA, and then your amps here. Right, so I've got this two bits of uh, angle iron set up here. Uh, so obviously I'm a complete novice. Uh, I've had about, about, probably about 30 minutes worth of uh, training about six months ago, and that was with scratch start, and I didn't get very far, so yeah, don't complain about my welding because it's gonna be awful probably. Right, okay, so here's my crappy TIG welding. Constructive comments only. I know it's poor, and I know it's crap, so you don't need to tell me. So the uh, arc starting from the machine seems to be pretty good, and the arc seems to be quite smooth. So yeah, seems to be quite a nice little machine. But uh, as I said, I'm no TIG welder. Right, so I'll just show you the uh, arc start on the uh, machine
seems to start really well. I mean, I'm not sure if I've got my tungsten ground correctly or not, so... I've just, you know, I don't know about grinding tungstens. Uh, that's my tungsten there. And I've, the stick out's probably too far, I don't know. So there's obviously no problem with the uh, arc starting on this machine. This seems to start first time every time. Right, okay, so I think that's probably enough of my embarrassing TIG welding. So let's test the stick welding side of it and see how much better that is. Right, okay, so let's uh, take the machine apart and see what it's like on the inside. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the rear of the circuit board, so... <coughs> Looks like quite a reasonable circuit board. It's uh, lacquered. It's got nice uh, thick uh, tracks on the PCB for the high current places. Uh, looks reasonably good from this end. Let's turn it around. So I'm not going to be poking my fingers in here anywhere because I've just uh, had it powered on and I don't want to get zapped by a capacitor. So, I mean, it looks reasonably good. Uh, got some capacitors here. There's the bridge rectifier up here with a big aluminium heat sink on it. Got the gas solenoid down here. We've got this buzz bar going up to the front panel. Um, then we've got the high frequency area down here. <coughs> uh, we've got the controller. Just up here, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Um, whether this is a, it says it's a 250 amp, but uh, with a lot of cheap welders, they're not usually what they say they are. And I suspect, possibly, uh, this isn't what it says it is either. Okay, so here I'm trying to test to see what the maximum um, amp output of this machine is. Um, I'm doing it with a clamp meter now. A clamp meter is not the most accurate uh, tool to do this with. Uh, to do it properly, you'd want a resistive load with an inline amp meter. I don't have that. I did have this uh, clamp meter checked a few months ago against a more expensive meter, and it was reasonably accurate. But as I say, you know, give or take, you know, 10, 15, 20 amps either way. <clears throat> uh, it looks like this machine is probably around we'll say, a 160 amp machine and this is a DC clamp meter as well yeah as with mo a lot of these cheaper units they say one thing on the box but they're different on the inside but even though saying that this say is a 160 amp unit it's still pretty good for the price it's not that bad I mean, it seems to be quite a tidy unit I mean I can't say how long it's going to last uh, a lot of units, inverters, when you turn them on the first time, if they're going to go, 
that's when they'll go. Uh, if you give them a good workout, when you first get the machines, then uh, usually if they're going to die, they'll die. And I've seen that uh, with more expensive units as well. So if you watch till the end of the video, you'll see the uh, clip where I burned uh, 10 rods continuously. Well, I got to nine and got bored actually, because it was taking like 20 minutes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the air that was coming out of it was quite warm, but it was still running and it's still working now. So that's good. The MMA, manual metal arc welding. Seems quite smooth the um, arc and yeah and the arc starts on the TIG torch and that are good but uh, obviously I'm not a very good TIG welder so uh, hopefully I'll get better at it <laughs> but uh, yeah I mean overall I'm reasonably happy would I tell anybody to buy it I don't know that's completely up to you would I buy it myself uh, I was going to buy one but as I got this sent to me uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I would have purchased it because I was looking for a cheap TIG unit with a high frequency start. So yeah, I mean the uh, links will be in the description. Go take a look at it. Yeah, thanks for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please comment, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. It'd be much appreciated. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. So here I was uh, running some 3.2 mil rods, uh, 6013s, and I was hoping to run 10 rods, but I got bored after the ninth rod. So yeah, uh, still worked perfectly. The arc's pretty smooth, you know, it runs quite nicely. So this was probably running probably at about 85, 90 amps, I would suspect, uh, not the 125 which is shown on the display. I pity the fool that watches this. Sorry, that was my best Mr. T impersonation. Uh, but anyway, I'd like to say thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.